When I say goth, I bet you immediately start thinking of dark clothes, edgy jewelry, maybe some tattoos, and dark dramatic makeup, right? Hey, that's my Christmas outfit! (laughs) Just kidding. Anyway, ask Wednesday Adams, the goth queen, and she'll tell you that the word goth originally referred to a nomadic Germanic tribe who fought against the Roman Empire. But here's the thing. That's actually how the meaning of the word as you know it today came into existence. So let's go back in time to figure out how Goths, the ancient people of the North, ended up helping create the Gothic art and Gothic subculture. Our story begins in ancient Rome. You see, as the Roman Empire expanded and expanded more, it became inevitable that they faced raids and invasions from the people living along its borders. Among the most powerful of these people were the Goths. They were sometimes referred to as barbarians by the Romans, meaning foreign, crude, and uncivilized. Well, to the Romans, maybe. Though when exactly they lived there is unknown. Some records suggest that Goths migrated from an island called Scansia, aka modern-day Scandinavia. It is after a series of migrations toward the south that they found themselves living close to the borders of the Roman Empire, which was, at the time, in control of most of Europe. They started fearing the threat that Rome and the Romans posed to their way of life. And that's how the centuries of aggression began between the Goths and the Roman Empire. It ultimately resulted in the Goths leaving the city of Rome, which marked the beginning of the medieval period in Europe. Goths were composed of two tribal groups the Visigoths, the Goths of the West, and the Ostrogoths, the Goths of the East. As the Roman Empire split into the Western and Eastern Roman Empires, these two tribes played significant roles in its defense, as well as its internal power struggles, while some of the tribes remained enemies, also pronounced enemies of the Roman Empire, others were actually incorporated into its army. Now this may come as a surprise, but most of what we know about Roman traditions today is all thanks to the Goths. Because rather than destroying and replacing it with their own, Goths preserved many aspects of Roman culture. Considering they're the ones bringing its end, this is a bit ironic, isn't it? With the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the classical period in Europe ended, and what many call the Dark Ages began. If you've been on a tour to Europe or you're interested in architecture, you've probably heard the term a Gothic structure, which was related to ancient Goths in a twisted way. Because, the funny thing is, it was originally used as an insult. Roman culture was never fully lost, but its influence declined over time. New art styles arose, which were more focused on symbolism and allegory, rather than proportion and realism. And during the Middle Ages, these new styles extended to architecture, too. This new architectural style was characterized by tall, heavy, and imposing structures with pointed arches, flying buttresses, and large windows which made them look more skeletal and ornate. Rather than having sturdy walls and columns of the classical buildings, these structures had open and luminous interiors. Over time, many cathedrals and castles with such styles started to appear throughout Europe. The cathedral at Notre Dame is one of the best examples. But no fashion lasts forever. With the Italian Renaissance, the admiration for ancient Greece and Rome was renewed, so artists started to consider this pointed design crude and inferior in comparison. It was the Italian artist and writer Giorgio Vasari who used the term Gothic to describe this medieval style of architecture. He was one of those people who hoped to revive the architecture of the classical area, finding this new style crude and lacking any culture. So he actually used the word Gothic in a rude way, referring to the barbarians, aka the Goths, who he viewed as the ones to destroy the classical civilization and bring a dark and unenlightened time. Soon, the word Gothic started to be associated with darkness, superstition, and simplicity, and came to describe the whole medieval period overall. 
In the 1700s, the Enlightenment period began, and scientific reason and rationalism became the whole deal. However, not everyone was so enthusiastic about those. Romantic writers like Goethe and Byron wanted to take a break from these ways of thinking and living and started dreaming about the idealized versions of the past with natural landscapes and mysterious spiritual forces. It was the British romantic author Horace Walpole who first applied the term Gothic to his 1764 novel The Castle of Otranto. The fun fact is Walpole was so taken with Gothic architecture and art that he built a Gothic-style castle named Strawberry Hill House. That's why some people argue that he was the first modern-day goth. So, the word Gothic emerged again in the form of a new literary movement this time, and the Gothic novel, which combined romance and dark elements to produce mystery, suspense, terror, horror, and the supernatural rose in popularity. The typical settings where the stories usually took place were crumbling ruins, castles, gloomy cemeteries, and lonely and foggy roads. The characters usually consisted of cruel parents, sinister people of power, courageous heroes, and damsels in distress. Of course, there were supernatural figures and monsters of all kinds as well. The Gothic plots often combine horror and the supernatural with romance and heroism. Terrifying things and events were mixed with captivating ones, as a salute to medieval architecture's combination of light and shadow. Famous Gothic novels include Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray, Gaston LaRue's The Phantom of the Opera, and Robert Louis Stevenson's The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Most of Edgar Allan Poe's stories are written in a Gothic style as well. Another thing that's worth mentioning about Gothic literature is the fact that it paved the way for today's horror movies, detective fiction, psychological thrillers, and all things Tim Burton. The word Gothic continued to be used in literature and the movie industry until the 1970s, when the post-punk music scene emerged. The critic John Stickney was the first one to use goth for music. In 1967, he coined the term Gothic Rock to describe one of the gigs of the rock band The Doors. However, he was not the only one to do so. Around the same time, Kurt Lodger, who was also a critic himself, described the Velvet Underground song All Tomorrow's Parties as a mesmerizing gothic rock masterpiece. This way, a new era started. Only a couple of years later, many other bands like The Cure, Joy Division, Bauhaus, and The Banshees made goth music a thing of its own, also known as a new genre. They combined gloomy lyrics and the rather chaotic sound of punk with imagery inspired by the Victorian era, classic horror, and glam fashion. They took the dark clothes and piercings that previously belonged to the punk music scene, but they ditched its angry attitude. They were all about romance with everything dark and magic-related. Eventually, Joy Division's manager described the band as gothic. This helped solidify goth as a distinctive sound as well as an aesthetic. Against the 1980s pastel and neon pop culture, the goth scene stood its ground as a dark and moody alternative. After the music scene emerged, it was inevitable for goth to become a fashion statement too. Gothic fashion has dark, mysterious, and otherworldly features. Black clothing, dark makeup that is on the heavier side, exotic hair. Gothic clothing usually consists of black lace, black velvets, fishnets, and leather. A little bit of purple and red can be added to the mixture. There are many variations of Gothic fashion, from aristocratic or cyber goths to Victorian goths. There's even something called haute goth, which refers to the Gothic elements that are brought to runways. Despite all the prejudices that are surrounding the goths, 
they are known for their culture of acceptance and embracing alternative lifestyles. And in return, this helps the Gothic aesthetic and culture to survive. So, we'll see if the word goth will soon be used to describe new things. In any case, one thing is sure to stay the same, and it's the goth's culture's roots in the love of darkness. Ooh.